Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about Vivek Ramaswamy, and I want to talk about, um, specifically, I want to talk about modern Americans, uh, specifically modern liberal feminist Americans, and how they view politics, specifically for the specific purpose of looking at how Vivek Ramaswamy can, can get liberal feminist voters to vote for him by understanding them better, okay? Um, and this entire video is prompted by an astonishing statement, which I think is deeply important and we need to really face facts. Uh, we really need to face harsh realities, right? On um, how Americans view politics and how they view their own understanding and their own views of politics. Because a lot of this is self-awareness. And, and so basically, Vivek Ramaswamy, need, he cannot leave women voter behind, voters behind, especially with Nikki Haley, like just right on his tail, right? Like Nikki Haley is, so first of all, Donald Trump, uh, if you think Donald Trump's gonna win, you're a sucker fool, right? Like, why do you think Donald Trump's gonna win? Oh, let me guess. The polls say he's going to win, just like the polls said um, Hillary Clinton was win, right? And every Trumper out there who is pointing to the polls, you guys are the most ridiculous fools on the planet, right? If you think Trump's going to win because the polls say he's going to win, you better wake up, right? Like, that's exactly what happened to Hillary Clinton, right? Like, and, and you know, so one, Trump is done. He's finished. He's an absolute ridiculous candidate that he, can, he cannot make it to the debates, right? And the reason why he can't debate, make it to the debates is I literally don't think he can stand two hours in a row right now, right? Like, he could not, like, could you imagine putting an 80-year-old candidate next to, next to Vivek Ramaswamy? I, the more I think about it, I really think Trump understands he's in the checkers moment, right? He, he is, uh, you know, the... Basset Hound jowled uh, Nixon, and Vivek Ramaswamy is just going to look like a vibrant, alive person, not a person ready to fall into a grave, right? Like, you know, at 76, you know, Donald Trump was laughable. Now, it's absurd to even consider, you know, we know, we know what living under an 80-year-old president is like, you know, wondering if his next paragraph is going to be comprehensible, right? Like, and it has nothing to do with Trump at this point. The experiments run. We know how an 80 year old president runs, right? It's not, it doesn't work, period. End of sentence, right? So, so Donald Trump is finished. The only, the only real can, the only real Republican candidates are candidates that have by merit, right? And we are Republicans. We can't just dismiss merit, right? Like Democrats can do that, right? Like they, they can go on talk and they can go on unicorn tears and, you know, and, um, pixie dreams, but Republicans aren't supposed to do that. We're supposed to go on fact and merit, right? Like, we're supposed to go on merit, right? And right now, the merit of, of Donald Trump is nothing. He cannot walk upstairs, get on a stage, stand for two hours, and answer hard questions because he's 80, right? And he, and the most, the most predictable action that will happen to him in the next four years is to fall into a coffin, not fall into a great rain, R-A-R-E-I-A-N-G-N. It's, this continues to be absurd, right? And everything I just said for, for President Trump, somebody was like, hey, are you confusing Biden and Trump? Yes, I confuse them frequently. And the reason why is they're both ward males who are about to fall into a coffin. They're exactly the same and their voters are the same. And this is where we're landing. You and me are special. You and I are supporting an actual candidate of hope, an actual candidate of science. Science tells us, you know, a 38 year old has a good chance of living through the most difficult job in the world. Science tells us, oh my gosh, Diane Feinstein just fell into a coffin because you're put her under a strain that was a fraction of the strain that the presidency will be, right? This is literally an experiment that's already run. We got the data back and it doesn't work, right? President Biden cannot speak comprehensible paragraphs. Diane Feinstein literally fell into a coffin this is finished, right? We, we really have got to stop, you know, going round and round on this, right? So here's the issue, right? 
So Grace Randolph said something astounding on her channel, and I and we got to talk about it, right? So she so so one. The reason why I'm talking about Grace Randolph, she's the best movie reviewer in the world, and I have incredible access to her, and I have incredible information about her. And the reason why is I listen to her every day, right? And I think she is the perfect template for understanding the modern, educated, feminist woman, right? Liberal feminist, right? And, and here's the thing. There are millions of them. And she's perfect, right? She's the perfect template to understand the modern American uh, liberal feminist woman, right? One, she's childless. I know this because she she does she speaks very at length about her life, right? And the reason why is she wants to be the best um, the best movie reviewer in the world, right? And so one of the ways she's done this is she she does two live streams a week. And there's almost nothing I don't know about her because she says it publicly, right? So she's a perfect sample, right? And so she doesn't have children, right? And she's dedicated herself to her career. This is, and she's like in her 30s, maybe early. I don't think Grace Randolph is 40. I think she's in her late 30s, right? I think she's exactly the same age as Vivek Ramaswamy. Now, why don't I know that? Because I don't, you know, I haven't taken the time to look up Grace's uh, age because it hasn't become an issue, right? But she's, she is spot on, right, for understanding, in my opinion, a liberal feminist woman, right? Not all liberals are feminists, not all feminists are liberal, and not all liberal feminists are women. But, but she, this is a, this, there is literally five to 15 million votes here, if you can understand her, right? And if you could target her, right? Target, not her as a person, but her as a type, right? So here's what she said that I thought was outrageously astounding. So she, so, and and the other thing I love about thinking about Grace Randolph as a template for voting is she doesn't, she, she hates politics. She hates politics, but she's constantly talking about politics. And the reason why is she wants to talk about movies. Movies are all politics then, right? Now, what's interesting is everybody else is arriving here, right? I think every other American is like, I don't want to talk about politics, but whatever they do, right? Let's say they're just sports fans, politics, right? Let's say they're into knitting, politics, right? It doesn't matter what you're into anymore. Politics has marinated everything in America at this point. We're so partisan, it has penetrated every single aspect of life, right? So here's what she said. So she was talking about James Gunn's Superman movie, right? And here's what she said. She said, she's talking about James Gunn's Superman movie. And she's like, please keep your politics out of this movie, right? But I understand that you need to put in Lex Luthor, right? So Lex Luthor is a businessman. You could say whatever mean thing, you could say whatever you want about whatever, you know, you could say whatever mean thing you want about a businessman. You could say whatever you want about a businessman, right? Um, but you could, so here, here's her quote. You could say whatever you want about a businessman. We all now understand that business is evil. And she thought this was common sense and a commonly accepted um, statement. And then she said, but keep politics out of your movie, James Gunn. You can hear, listen to it again. You can say whatever you want about a businessman. She's referring to Lex Luthor, right? Because we all know business is evil but keep politics out of your movie, James Gunn, right? Absolutely astounding, right? Because like, just listen to it, right? One, she's not self-aware. She is not self-aware of her own politics. That is incredible, right? How oblivious she is to her own politics. Because one, she thinks that all people agree that you can attack rich businessmen, right? But the politics in that are extreme, right? Republicans, you can't attack a business person, right? And Republicans, you can't attack a man, right? Like, they're like, hey, we're done with this, right? We don't agree with it. And, and on the liberal side, they're like, of course you can attack a business person. And of course you can attack a man. All men are t attackable, you know, from a narrative perspective. You can say whatever evil thing you want because we all agree that men are evil and that business people are evil. Two distinct things. She just, she, she conflated them, 
right? But they're two distinct things, right? She's saying, oh, of course we all know that, you know, rich business people are evil. No, the Republicans don't sign on to that. That is your liberal politics. That is your Democrat politics, right? In addition, not all Republicans believe that men are evil. Now, we understand that this is uh, granted on the Democrat side, right? That men, that men are evil, right? Like, And it's astounding how unself-aware that her, that her statement is. She's saying, hey, attack, you know, it's Lex Luthor. Paint him as a greedy businessman and evil. Paint him as a man. Paint him as a, a business, uh, an evil business person and evil. Paint him as a man and evil, right? But don't put politics in it. She's unaware that her statement is marinated in politics, completely political, right? So she thinks that things I believe are not politics. They're simply right right now why does she think this M relatively right and i've been coming i begin i begin i've been beginning to understand this because I, I i have a commenter right here very wealthy commenter completely self un unself aware has absolutely no idea that they're privileged and powerful they think that they're non-privileged that they're marginalized and not powerful but they're, they're completely wrong they have no self-awareness Right, and w this is interesting. The wealth, <laughs> the wealthy, think that common knowledge is their knowledge, right? They think that everyone should agree with them, and that they just have a bog standard, non-biased belief. It's outrageous. It is shockingly outrageous, right? It is incredible, right? And here's the other one, where you're like, well, wait a second, is wealthy, you know, part of this, uh, you know, template? Yes, yes. And and I don't know if you're aware of this, but generally, if you're if you the more degrees you have, the more liberal you are. And the reason why is universities are liberal engines, right? They run on on liberalness, right? And they produce liberal people. Now I have two degrees, right? And I'm not in, I'm not immune from this. And guess get this, all my conservative friends think I'm extremely liberal, right? They're they're not they're not correct, right? Like they, it's interesting. I you know, I'm essentially you know, verboten to both sides, right? I'm, I'm too liberal. Uh, I'm too liberal for the conservatives, too conservative for the liberals, right? So it's, it's really wild, but like, so, but it was, but I think Vivek has to start to understand. He has to start to understand. People do not have self-awareness when they're talking about politics. They genuinely, uh, actually, let, let me put it this way. Liberal feminist, liberal feminists, right? I'm not going to include women on this, right? Liberal feminists are shockingly unaware, right? And then, because I think there are a lot of liberal feminist men and liberal feminist women, right? That that category is not specific to women, right? Uh, there are a lot of liberal feminists, but I think generally liberal feminists outrageously self-unaware, uh, self right? And so, and I think Vivek needs to understand this, right? If you're going to cut in right and and take the you know and take the tumor out you have to know what you know what what you're actually going for so part of the problem is many liberal feminists don't even have any idea how how self unaware they are right so vivek has to understand that before he can fix it and he has to find a way he has to find a way to reach liberal feminists right now one of the ways and i know this sounds strange is his smile he smiles constantly right and that works because he's a young person right uh, an 80 year old almost corpse smiling at you does not work and believe it or not i actually think you know like eight ten eight twelve years ago biden's smile helped him a bit it doesn't smile it doesn't uh it doesn't help him now thank goodness right like i think when he smiles now he just looks like a ghoul right you're like are those fangs or like, it just looks like it looks like you're seeing you know part of his skull you know it's just because he's 80, right? Like this, we, this is absurd. No 80 year old should be running for president. I understand why we're still even discussing this, but we are discussing it because both parties are doing this now. It is bonker, it is apples, bananas that this is, this is where we've arrived, but this is where we've arrived and we need to be aware of that, right? Just quote, you know, apples, bananas situation, right? But, and so, so one, in order to get into their politics and, and, and convince 
these liberal feminists that they need that that Biden is not helping them and that he is nothing but a, a ward male power base and absolutely regressive, right? And doesn't you know because generally liberal feminists they want to be progressive, they want to help people of color, they want and and they actually th and you know and here's the thing they're completely self unaware and don't realize hey, guess what? You know what you know what Trumpers want to do? They want to make sure that the power base is never given to people of color. You know what the best way to do that is? Elect, elect President Biden, right? There's no better way to suppress people of color and make sure they never reach, uh, never reach um, power again, right? Because they did when, when, when I elected Obama twice, right? Is to elect another ward male, right? Like there's, and so the biggest thing that Vivek Ramaswamy has to do is he has to figure out how to literally scalpel into self-awareness scalpel in this this layer of self unawareness that is that liberal feminists suffer from deeply deeply profoundly right like i was shocked like i could not believe the words that were coming out of her mouth she's like say whatever you want about a businessman we all know they're evil no absolutely not like that is like she actually believes most people think that businessmen are evil. No, businessmen are just Americans, right? Trying to feed their families. They're not evil people, right? But she's completely unaware that this outrageously prejudiced view she has is not true. And not and not only that it's not true, that it's not commonly not that it's not common knowledge. She thinks it's common knowledge specifically because she um she thinks it's common knowledge specifically because, um, yeah, it is it's truly astounding. She thinks it's common knowledge because it's her knowledge. It is like apples, bananas, truly, truly, truly. So this is what Vivek needs to work on. He should study, very much study uh, Grace Randolph. I think there are about five to 15 million liberal feminists in America. And you know, I'll pull the I'll pull the um I'll pull the woman part off. I don't even think it's needed, right? I think there are many liberal feminists in America who are men who if you understand Grace Randolph, they're childless. They put their career first, right? They um they believe that what they believe is common knowledge and everyone should believe it. They have no self-awareness, right? And actually, the more I think about it, it's not liberal women, it's not liberal feminists who are women. It's simply liberal feminists, right? I don't, I don't think you need to even put in the woman part there to everything I said, just apply it to liberal feminists, right? And now that we're taking the woman part off, if you understand Grace Randolph, right, and you can cut through her self-unawareness and, and say, hey, if you want an actual progressive candidate, Vivek Ramaswamy is, is the way to go, you could get 25, 35, maybe even 45 million Americans, highly educated, childless, uh, self unaware, incredibly privileged, not super wealthy, but definitely wealthy, right? There are a lot of Americans who fit this exact template, right? And I think, and and she, and Grace Randolph is a, is a particularly powerful American voting template because she shares constantly constantly right and she's not unique right i think a lot of her um uh, a lot of her attributes are shared by many americans but she can be studied because she's placed herself in a position where she talks about herself constantly and has exposed almost every single aspect of her personal life right and we need that knowledge in order to understand what how people get here and one of the strangest things is I know exactly how how um, Grace Randolph was raised because she talks about it. She openly talks about how her parents raised her and how her beliefs and how her political beliefs were specifically formed, right? Now, what's interesting is she had no intention of explaining her political views, right? She only wanted to talk about movies. But what's interesting is she is this corner case where she has become a perfect template for voting knowledge. Fascinating.